All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies course, I'm doing a series of video presentations based on the one of the books that we're using for the class. That book is shown here is Murox JavaScript and jQuery 4th Edition. So far, I've gone through Chapter 1, the Intro to Web Development, and Chapter 2, Get Started Fast with JavaScript, which puts us to Chapter 3. The essential JavaScript statements where we'll learn how to code conditionals, the control st statements, three illustrative applications, and we get introduced to arrays. Again, a lot of stuff in here, and a lot of it's not that easy if you've never had this before. So bear with me, and we'll go through it. Get going right now. All right, so the three essential JavaScript statements. Here are our applied objectives, and our knowledge objectives, part one, and part two. So here's the relational operators. And fortunately or unfortunately, the one that I think you should use the most often is not listed here and really I guess it's the two all right I, I want to mention something to you that a lot of people find confusing all right and that is this if I come in and do this if I say let me make this a little bigger so that you can read it okay so if I come in and say let x equal three let y equal double quote three double quote and if I say if x equal equal y that is actually right now going to return true it doesn't care about the fact that one of them's a number and one's a string it just cares if they hold the same value and they do that's typically not going to be the way you'll want to do that you'll want to do it like this you want to say if x equal oops equal 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 y which is the so the double equal right now right there is the equal to operator and again it returns true this next one that's here is the equal to plus identity operator and it returns false okay so double equal is just for equality triple equal will not only check to see whether or not um, two things are equal but are they the same type of variable not only that you may have already figured this out I would never write it like this if x not equal to y. Instead, I would write if x not equal equal to y. So this then becomes the not equal to operator. Both of them are going to return false. Well, that's, I, that's not true. Uh, let's see. I guess that will return false because they're not equal. And if it sees them as being equal, not, I'm not even sure what that would return. But this one is the not equal to plus identity operator all right the only reason i'm bringing this up is these are not mentioned in the chart here now they may mention it later i don't know so here's some checks you can also check to see whether or not something's numeric is n a n is not a number 
that can also be a variable that you put in here. So for instance, I could write something, I could write some code that kind of look like this. Let me just get rid of this stuff. And I'm going to say here, let your age equal prompt parse int how old are you and we'll default it to 21 all right and there needs to be two right parentheses right here there we go now what if we're running this and it comes up and it says how old are you and you put in Jeff well then it's going to return NAN so I should say here if is NAN your age we could just put up an alert that says you did not enter a number now, what we're going to get into in this chapter, because we're already, you see the if in there already, okay? So I could say else if your age is less than one or your age, it's just say greater than 125, we could put in a different alert that says, invalid age input and otherwise we could just put in an alert that says you let's use a template literal here you are your age years old so if i put 37 in there and i'm not but if i put 37 in there on this right here it would be numeric so that would fail it's not less than one it's not greater than 125 so that would fail so it would say you are 37 years old the key thing to realize when you're working on this is this is an if and else if you can have as many else ifs, else ifs as you want. If you do have an else, it must go on the bottom after all of the else ifs. All right. And if this is true, you skip all this. If this is false, but this is true, you skip this. If this is false and this is false, you do this. And if you can understand that, there's really not any more to understanding it than that. Now, I used in mine the OR, which is the double pipe sign. There's also an AND. Now, had we put in this, it would be silly, but had we put in this, this could never be true. This could never be true because how can an age be both less than one and greater than 125? All right. So if you want to include things, you use an and. If you want to preclude basically things, you typically will use an or. And not is the inverter. So not true means false. Not false means true. Not married is single. Not single is married type of an idea. So there's some examples right there. Now the key takeaway from right here is if you look on the bottom there, that's the order of precedence. So unless you use parentheses to change the order of precedence, you do all of your nots first, then you do your ands, then you do your ors. And it actually should make sense because it's going from the most exclusive to the least exclusive.
all right? So this is probably the most conservative that there is, and that's the most liberal there is, if you want to look at it that way. All right, so we looked at a little bit at conditional expressions with the if. I showed you an example. We looked at some of the relational operators, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. I showed you the triple equal. I showed you a compound conditional expression because we used ands and ors, and actually we used an or, and I showed it to you with an and. Those are the logical operators. We talked about that order of precedence, nots, then ands, then ors. There's also a short circuit operator. Now, let's look at what that means in terms of this. All right. So let's pretend when it said, how old are you? Let's pretend I put in negative 10. Well, that is a number, so that's going to be skipped. Is negative 10 less than 1? Yes, it is. With short circuit operating, if it's an or like this, as soon as it finds one that's true, it skips the other one. It doesn't have to make this check because it already made this check, which is true. And with an or, only one side has to be true. They can both be true, but only one side has to be true. Now, you also short circuit with an and. I'm not going to change this to an and, but had this been an and, if the first part is false, you don't check the second part. That's the short circuiting. You don't have to. So there's the if, and I don't think there's anything in there I haven't already shown you. There is an if with multiple else if clauses. Again, you don't need an else on the end, but if you do put one in with multiple else ifs, the else must be at the bottom after all of your else ifs, or you'll get an error message. There's a compound conditional. There's using or. So you're checking there for bad input. So what you're saying is if you ask the person to enter a number greater than a positive number. So if, you, if what they put in was not a number, they left it blank or whatever, or the number they put in was zero or below, you'd give that alert that says, please enter a valid number greater than zero. Now, just so you see, if you look up on the top there at the first two examples, they're the same thing. And in fact, you can even say if is valid, equal, 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 true. That's the way it should be done. Not the double equals like they show right here. This should be a triple equals, as should this, as should this. But this is a shortcut for this. This is a shortcut for this, etc. Now let's talk about the three different ways that you can loop in here. And to show you three simple examples, I'm going to print out the numbers 1 to 10 using each one of these loops. So when you have loops, you've got a variable that controls your loops. And I call mine LCV, which is short for loop control variable. I'm going to set it equal to 1. And I'm going to say while LCV is less than or equal to 10 and I'm going to say alert LCV let's use our template literals LCV equals And when we get done, we want to add 1 to LCV. So we can either say plus plus LCV, or we can say LCV plus plus, or we can say LCV equals LCV plus 1, or we can say LCV plus equals 1. The one that actually works the fastest is 
plus plus LCV. And that's going to print out in 10 different alert statements, LCV equals one, then LCV equals two, then LCV equals three, then LCV equals four, Oops. then LCV equals five. You're getting the idea, or hopefully you are. So let's grab this. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. The while loop that you see right here, this while loop is known as a pre, oops, pretest loop. And that means that you check this, and if this is true, you do what's in the curly braces, and if it's false, you don't. So if I had made this 11, 11 is not less than or equal to 10, so it would have skipped, it would have printed nothing. Because again, it's a pretest loop. So there's three steps in here. In the first step, what are we doing? It's right here. We are initializing our loop control variable. And in here is step two, we are testing our loop control loop control variable. And here is the third step. We are changing the value of our loop control variable. So take a look at that and make sure it makes some sense to you. In fact, at the end of this, I should have put in a backslash N. That'll give me a new line. So these, otherwise these would all appear on the same line. All right, so that's the first one. All right, I'm going to keep all of this here because I might be able to use it later. I don't know. But I'm going to hit enter a bunch of times. So this is off the screen. And I'm going to put in down here, I'm going to change this a little bit. Okay, I want the same thing to print out. But now I'm going to change this as follows. For let LCV equals 1, LCV less than or equal to 10, plus plus LC, oops, LCV. So hopefully you can see that on the same line here, on this line, I am. initializing testing and oops changing the value of the loop control variable i'm doing all those on this line so the advantage of a for loop is its brevity. We knocked this down to less lines than it was before. All right, it's still a pretest loop. So if I make this 11, if I make that 11, this never executes and nothing will print down here. So that's a for loop. All right, let's take a look at the third type of loop there is in here. Again, I'm going to copy this, come down to here and paste this in. Now I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to type in the word do. Just like that. This is a post test loop, meaning you always go through the loop. All right, you always go through the loop at least once. And the reason for that is you don't test the loop control variable until the bottom of the loop. So even if this was 11, it would still print out 11 and then it would stop. All right, so this is a post-test loop. 
the while loop and for loop are both pretest loops. That's pretty much what you need to know on simple loops. So we've gone through a bunch of this now. I didn't use their example. There's a do while, there's a for. All right, but we've gone through these now. Okay. So they're going to have three examples now. They're going to have another miles per gallon, and then there'll be a couple other ones, which I'll go through in just a moment.